NFL has developed some of the greatest, most historic franchises in all of sports. Iconic organizations whose legacies make up the very fabric of the league. The Dallas Cowboys, the Chicago Bears, and several others are critical components of the league's legendary history. Each of these organizations is founded on an identity of winning and consistency. But sometimes, their past can burden their present, handcuffing their ability to create success moving forward. The pressure to recreate the identity they established in their heyday can limit them from stepping outside of that framework, preventing them from finding new success. The Pittsburgh Steelers are the rare exception. They've continued the legacy of the Steel Curtain and have handed the blueprint of the 1990s Blitzburg defense down through generations. And they haven't just dominated, they've become the best. The ownership, the front office, and the coaches have maintained the same mentality and style, instilling their defensive philosophy through the same tenets of their Blitzburg roots. The past can restrict the present by narrowing a team's options and vision, but for the 2020 Pittsburgh Steelers, they've taken the same model and have thrived. True to their Blitzburg formula, they are first in blitz percentage, they have the highest pressure rate, the most sacks, the most most tackles for a loss, they are just the second team in NFL history to record three sacks and an interception in each of the first five games of the season, and they've done so by adapting the Blitzburg system to the modern NFL. The original Dick LeBeau game plan based out of a typical 3-4 defense nearly identical to how the Steelers play today. There are three defensive linemen and four linebackers with two of them on the ball creating a five-man front. Many of their blitzes come out of these fronts, where they send all five on-the-ball defenders to pressure the offensive line and attack the quarterback. They call these dog blitzes, which gives each of their pass rushers one-on-one -on -one matchups unless skill guys stay in to block. By blitzing the fifth defender, the five offensive linemen can't double-team anybody, which allows TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Bud Dupree, and the rest to eat. When offenses deploy two wide receiver sets, the Steelers can sit in their classic base 3-4 defense. But now that the NFL bases out of three wide receivers, the Steelers have had to get creative. When teams send out three or more wide receivers, defenses will counter by removing a big guy and sending in a third cornerback. For the Steelers, that corner is Mike Hilton. Hilton is one of the most important players on their entire defense. Despite being a cornerback, he is one of their most effective pass rushers. He's rushed 28 times, which is more than any of their linebackers. He has three sacks, which is more than Cam Hayward, and his 25% pressure rate is most of anybody on the team. With Hilton blitzing, the Steelers can still play their 3-4 in nickel personnel and use him as a 3-4 defensive end. Against the Giants in week one, they nuked Daniel Jones all game long and Hilton wreaked havoc. Since the Giants have a third receiver on the field, Hilton is brought in to match that receiver. Instead of five on the line of scrimmage, a typical nickel front has four linemen and two linebackers. Here, Bud Dupree, who is usually a 3-4 outside linebacker, is now the defensive end. But by blitzing Hilton and stunting him into the B-gap, Dupree is essentially still the outside backer blitzing off the edge. In other defenses, you'd typically see Dupree slant a gap inside to create room for Hilton, but by stunting them, the Steelers cause confusion for the offensive line. This man protection requires the rookie Andrew Thomas to set for Dupree and Saquon Barkley to handle anything extra like Hilton, but Thomas forgets he has Barkley behind him and uses the block the most inside threat principle which gives Dupree a free hit on dimes. When we go back to the wide shot, it's important that we know that a defender who is capped by another defender is often, but not always, blitzing. The Steelers will usually cap Hilton with safety Terrell Edmonds, which can be a pre-snap tell. You can see it happen again in the fourth quarter. Defenses do this so they're not out of position and the coverage stays tight, but it can alert the quarterback pre-snap that that defender is blitzing. The Steelers are again in their four linemen front and are overloading the right side of the Giants' offensive line. They're trying to induce the Giants' three-jet protection, which is a three-man slide to the right, to 
man blockers to the left with Saquon picking up any extra threats. Just like the play before, Dupree essentially becomes the outside 3-4 linebacker and Hilton knives inside technically as the D end. This time Andrew Thomas is right and Saquon is wrong and Hilton flies in for the sack. The concept was actually designed for TJ Watt to stunt through the A-gap since they knew they'd get the slide to the right. So with Cam Hayward taking the center back to the man side and Stephon Tewitt picking the right guard and tackle, Watt has an open open gap to hit dimes. But when Blitzberg is unleashed and is coming at your O-line from all directions, you know you're getting hit. You're just not sure from where. Offenses have to keep where Hilton is at all times, and there are several indicators pre-snap that he might be coming. We already discussed what it means when a safety is capping him, but another one to look for is how often he blitzes off the backside of a receiver motioning away from him. The Steelers can push his assignment down to the other end of the defense, which leaves Hilton free to come off the edge. If we can pick that up, offensive coordinators certainly can pick it up. But just because it's a tendency does not mean it happens 100% of the time. At the end of the game, the Steelers are winning 26-21. The Broncos are in the red area, and it's 4th and 2. Denver is worried Hilton will blitz off the backside of the orbit motion, so the Steelers use that to their advantage. The Broncos know their tendency, and though the Steelers are in their five-man front, the O-line slides four to the left to account for Hilton rushing. This leaves the right tackle Elijah Wilkinson manned up on Watt, so there's nobody to block Edmonds rushing off the edge. Look how Jeff Driscoll watches Hilton the entire way. This threat of pressure messes with his pre-snap read, and makes it tougher for him to check to the right protection. He's still looking at Hilton after the snap. And since Edmonds is free off the edge, Driscoll has to find his hot receiver. Hot meaning a shorter route to beat the blitz. But that extra pause early in the down prevents him from picking up the two yards, and the Steelers win the game. While the pass rush might get more notoriety, the run defense has been absolutely lights out. According to my friends over at Football Outsiders, the defensive line has allowed just 2.27 adjusted line yards, which is insane. The difference between them and the second best D-line is larger than the difference between the second and the 12th. The speed, power, and matchup domination of each man up front makes it nearly impossible to run on them, and the team's been together for so long, their trust and chemistry allows them to play at lightning speed. The Eagles are running inside zone from the gun, where the running back sets his track towards the inside leg of the play side guard. Matt Pryor will try to block to it outside, while Jason Kelsey and Nate Herbig will use what's called an A block to push Hayward backside, then Kelsey will climb to the second level. Watch out to it uses a lag technique to lag one gap behind the block and immediately blow up the play. He's initially aligned in the B gap, so that's where Pryor expects him to go. It's risky to jump out of your assigned gap, because if you don't make the play, there's a gaping hole for the run. But when linebacker Vince Williams sees to it hopping backside, he knows to leave his assigned gap and scrapes over to cover for him. On the other side, Dupree jumps into the other B gap, Devin Bush forces the run inside, and the play has nowhere to go. The Steelers have a truly suffocating defense, and what they've done through week six has been historic. But they aren't perfect. While this year's team is statistically even better than last year's, which was also an incredible defense, there's one issue that 2020's D has struggled with. Surrendering explosive passes. Last year, they had the seventh fewest explosive passes allowed. But this year, they've had the 8th most. Offenses have not had much success against the Steelers at all, but when they do, it's come on 20, 30, and 40 yard gains. Sometimes it happens when the offense picks up the blitz, which naturally leaves a secondary vulnerable. But other times, they are just flat out blowing coverages. It's something that can be fixed, but also something to keep an eye on moving forward. When the Steelers start playing better teams come playoff time, if they haven't been able to minimize these explosive plays, better coordinators, quarterbacks, and offensive lines will handle their pressure, expose their scheme, and make them pay. 
But the beauty of this team is the experience and roster consistency they've cultivated the last several years. They've kept the same roster with the same front office and coaches and maintained their identity for decades. They've developed a defensive scheme that's adapted their older philosophy and have modernized it to attack modern offenses. Each player in their front seven and several on the back end are Pro Bowl quality players. Watt, Minka, and Hayward are all pro and using deception with players like Mike Hilton has mixed scheme with power in ways that have obliterated opposing offenses. The continuity throughout their organization has allowed them to fit high quality players into positions they know will succeed, and their maintained identity has been critical to building their dominant franchise. That identity has been forged through decades, tormenting offenses for years. It's been refined in the present and will continue continue in the future. If you're facing the Steelers, you better come ready. Blitzburg is here, and they are not going away.